welcome to this new video i'm very excited to present to you one easy method to rig the hair for complex anime hair and also for in this case jackets we're going to use gilane from mushoku tensei uh, anime which is a sword master basically a wolf girl warrior wolf girl oh my god this that that's a mouthful anyways so here's the technique what we're going to do is to isolate the bones that we are interested in inherit their vertex weights and transfer them into our mesh we're going to do that step by step it's a very easy step if you have previously um, have experience with this you can jump directly to minute number three because we're going to first work with the basics and to start off we're going to use this simple rig jacket that we have right here and we are also going to use a generated rigify rig we're going to control j we're going to mix them and that will put the bone the bone jackets jacket bones uh, directly into bone layer number one in the rigify rig bone layers as you can see right here so you can put pause on the video and read the descriptions that i've truthfully reviewed in text okay so this is the layer that all of the jacket bones have been transferred to that's bone layer number one and what we want to do is to get all of those bones and transfer them to an appropriate layer which will use also the rigify arm bones and we are also going to locate all of those bones for the jacket later on into the tweak layer for the bones that we have right here for the torso, okay? So this is the bone layer number 30. So we're going to locate all of those jacket bones into layer number 30, as you can see it right here. You can put pause on the video and check it out. So first of all, make sure that all of your jacket bones are set to deform. You can do that in edit mode. So we're going to select all of them and originally, uh, we place them here into the fourth layer and if you click on face which is layer number one you're you're going to see the bones right there so we want to press m to move them to layer number five as you can see right here layer number five is our torso tweak that's that's where the bones are going to live so we're doing this moving back and forth so you can get accustomed to what we're going to do next and what we're going to do next is to select every jacket bone and then we're going to press M again, and then we're going to move them into the, the uh, layer number 30, where our deforming bones from the generated rigify rig are living. And what we want to do here is to specifically select the bones that are going to affect our jacket. Now, remember, our jacket, it's uh, an external mesh. It's not part of the same mesh. And we're selecting here the bones that are um, from rigify and also the ones that we just merged okay they were merged into layer number one and now they are transferred into layer number 30 okay those are the bones that are good to go these are the ones that we are going to be using now i'm going to press ctrl i to invert my selection so the face the ear the feet the foot are going to be selected and then i'm going to press h to hide them all now what we want to do is to select our mesh first and then select our armature and then Control p to assign it just the armature we don't want any weights so make sure that you don't have any vertex groups over here the next thing we want to do is to go to post mode and then select all of the bones that we have right here that is important and later shift click the mesh once we do that, we are going to enter into weight paint. And once we're on weight paint, we're going to come here all the way to weight, assign automatic from bones. What we just did was to isolate the bones that we were interested in to make the jacket inherit only those vertex groups weights. Okay, so as you can see, it is successful. It's completely amazing because you don't have you didn't have to worry about the hairs for the bones or the hairs for, for the bones on the hips or on the chest or on the hands no we just isolated this uh, group of bones and then we transferred their vertex influence awesome so let's go back into post mode now we want to move all of these bones back to layer number five in the bone layer number five one two three four and momentarily i'm going to move them here so um you already know that layer bone number five is the one that contains the um 
just tweak the forms, okay? So momentarily, I'm going to move them here onto layer 4. Now, while we're still on layer 30, let's press Alt-H to unhide every other bone that we had there with the Rigify generated rig. Those are the deformer bones, okay? So you can also uh, press N, and then from the... Um, objects panel right here in the end panel you can click and activate those bone layers that's very easy to do now if you identify here my torso tweak my torso tweak layer okay that's layer number five but we um, purposely put the jacket bones on layer number four because I wanted to show you that even if you go back into post mode you will still have them selected so press M again in post mode and then move them into layer number five which is the torso tweak now if you click there you will see that the uh, it's a similar button to activate all of those things perfect so that's it now you have your jacket weighted and it will react to the controls that you put okay don't go away because we will review how you can apply this technique to rig hair after these messages All right, we're back. Don't forget that every Patreon will get this file. This is this month's reward. So let's go into the hair. How do we work here? In our previous example, we work with a jacket created separately from the Rigify rig. But this time we're going to work with the hair, which has been generated with the Rigify rig. And the way we do that is that while we are on meta rig, you can create additional chain bones in edit mode. Right now I am in post mode and as you can see right here you have different properties set to the bone type of the Rigify rig. In this case the Rigify type is set to basic copy and that is exactly what I'm going to be using for all of the other bones that make up the hair. So Mr. Chiller do you mean that Rigify can generate my bone hairs, my hair bones? Yes. And the way you can do that is by setting the Rigify type for the bone in post mode. This is very important. So as you can see, when you press generate the rig, everything has been created. Again, don't forget that all of our tweak bones are on layer 30 of the bone layer system or, or the bone layer organization. So again, we're going to use the same technique. This time we have the face deformation bones. We don't want them. So we're going to hide them. Press H in post mode. And now that we only have the hair, and that is only the only thing that we care about, let's uh, parent the hair and the armature. And then after that, uh, we're going to go again to the weight paint mode and then assign weight from selected bones. Now, this is just fantastic because uh-oh, now you have an error. Mr. Schiller, this is not good. I don't like Blender. Blender is crashing. No, it's not. What is going on is that whenever you create hair, you may probably have uh, intersecting strands or intersecting geometry or flipped normal geometry. And that is what is causing that thing, that error. So what you can do to fix it is to go into edit mode, press F3, merge by distance, and then let Blender do the work. All right. Blender, I kind of like this function that it has. Yes, it is amazing. So let's go again. Let's try again. Select the um, mesh. Now the uh, weights. And then finally, they are assigned. Mr. Schiller, my hair is not deforming. Now, this is very important. This is another reason why you should troubleshoot this first. Before entering into weight edit mode, you should... Uh, make sure that your bones are deforming and not only that that they are deforming into the right distance and that's it that's how you troubleshoot these kind of errors now the the technique is really simple again if you need to review it go back to minute number three and play it back for just one minute because that's all there is to it but i really wanted to show you what other capabilities this rig has so if you turn off all the modifiers you can see that the rig is really quick really fast really lightweight Here's a quick time lapse that I'm doing, and I am also sharing with you this, this cool technique, which is to use transparent objects to cast shadows. So you can stylize your shadows as well, because sometimes, you know, uh, shadows are not cast the right way. Now, the next thing you want to check is the color correction for your entire scene. This is uh, very important when you stylize your characters as well. And we're going to pose her into her iconic pose or silhouette. Also, if you get the file and you press playback, you're going to get the uh, wiggly bones for her hair. 
And I hope you have liked this episode and this is an amazing work that was created through almost um, two months uh, on and off for the weekends only, by the way. And this is how you're going to get the file. When you open it, you can uh, click on Shaded View. And also, these are the plugins that you need. You're going to need to in uh, install or activate from the Edit Preferences Stored Views, this add-on which allows you in View tab in the 3D viewport to have your custom um, camera positions recorded, if we can say it that way. And the other plugin that you need, it's called Wiggle Bones. It's called Wiggle Bones, and you can also download it to make this rig react and simulate when you're pushing play. Now, as you can see, you can uh, check out the entire collection right here, correctly colored, and also make sure that wiggle bone for whatever you want to animate is set to active. Now, you can also review the settings that I have on this time lapse, push pause, and then check it out. And we have our hero character right here as a reward for this month or patrons. You can also get it at Gumroad. If you want to check out this file, you might consider becoming a patron and supporting this channel. You will have access to many other files that we previously shared as every month's reward. Thank you so much to all of these patrons who are really supporting um, the entire techniques that we're doing and this year uh, we're looking into expanding more into 2D plus 3D hybrid works. Hey, you know what? Try Blender. You should try Blender. Blender is powerful and beyond industry compatible. Don't forget that we did a poll to know which live stream we would do and you all won. So I'm looking for a date a, in the calendar to set it out for the live stream. But don't worry, if you subscribe and hit that bell notification button, you will be notified whenever I upload or whenever I go live. Thank you very much for your support. This has been Pierre Schiller, 3D animator and VFX compositor. And I hope to see you in the next video.